Hello, welcome to Furious Tea Break and another episode of Junk in the Trunk. And good news, we have returned to our original junk repository, the trunk of the old Rover P6 3500. The V8 is going to be giving up its junk from its trunk this time. Uh, full disclosure, this channel is called Tea Break, but I am drinking coffee right now, so let's get it out of the way first of all. Now, as always, people have been sending in interesting stuff from hopefully around the world. We'll find out when we check the postmarks where stuff has come from. And this feature is very much a part of the community, so we'll see what people have sent in to share with the class. I actually delayed this one by a couple of weeks because I had a couple of emails from people saying they had sent stuff in and I was waiting for it to arrive, but I haven't seen it yet, so I'm going to hopefully get those in for the next episode of Junk in the Trunk. If you would like to send stuff in to Junk in the Trunk, then there is an address you can use, which is... Oh, the old creek is back. P.O. Box 477 Aylesford ME6, that's Mike Echo 6 9 LE, that's 9 Lima Echo in the UK. Oh. Need to move that car forward a bit. Right, so without further ado, as I believe we have to say on this here internet, let's look at some junk from that head there trunk. I've got a couple of very interesting things for you this time. First of all, there's one that turned up by a very weird convoluted route. And if you're a fan of the Crown Victoria and its history, then stick around to the very end because you are going to love this one. I opened it ahead of time because I thought I knew what it was from the postmark and I was right. You're going to love this one. Right, on with the junk. Now, first of all, this one didn't go into the trunk because it's quite big. And I've already unwrapped it because I needed to use it. You'll see this in use in a forthcoming 200VI video. This though is a very large drain pan. So this came from a gentleman called Graham who very kindly, after he saw me trying to change the oil on the Crown Victoria and realising my existing drain pans just weren't big enough for it, said it would be much better if I had a proper one that could take the capacity. So he got onto Amazon and had one sent through to the PO Box address. And there's a bit of a story starts here. For some reason, Amazon packages aren't accepted at that P.O. Box address, or at least this one wasn't. Who knows why? So it got sent back and returned to him. So he said, is there an address, a real address he could send to? So, and I'm sure most people are genuine nice people sending stuff to me, but mere yeah, element of security with the internet. I didn't want to give my home address, so I gave a work address for a friend, an office address, you know, a you know, physical place that's not a home. And uh, he sent the oil drain pan off to that address, and uh, and we both wonder where it's gone. So after a week or two, I sent a message saying, has anyone seen this thing turn up? And it turned out they'd had a new engineer start the same day that this arrived. And uh, they'd forgotten to put the name on the package. And so the new engineer thought, oh, lovely, my new <laughs> shiny new oil drain pan. I'll be taking that with me. And he'd, uh, he'd nicked that. So the company then very kindly bought me an identical replacement, which they would have needed to buy for their engineer anyway. So yeah, this is um, third time lucky on, on getting this particular item over to me. But it has already proved extremely useful in working on the 200VI. So thank you, Graham. This is um, actually fantastic. Pop down there for now. Now let's look at the next item and retrieve our first item. Okay, this is an envelope addressed to Furious Driving PO Box 477 Aylesford ME69 LE. This item is ah, for use in the Crown Victoria. First of all, we've got a thin blue line American flag, but like the uh, UK ones with the Union Jack, but this is the American version. Um, this is from a guy called Rory, who is big in the Crown Victoria scene, so thank you, Rory. Uh, this is the same, the same guy who I also got the spare wheel for the car from, and another, another couple of bits which I've not fitted yet, which I'll put into in a future video you'll be seeing, and this is one I really, really wanted. This is the sticker that police cars have in the center of the dashboard above the, um, the boot release bu um, button. Warning, to reduce the risk of possible serious injury or death, a line amount hard or sharp police equipment in the trunk laterally. For details, the owner's guide supplement or cvpi.com. Now I think Rory recreates these because I've got a, a single ballistic panel sticker as well, which I think originally was supplied by him to someone else to go on the door because you did have later on the option of bulletproof doors on those cars, which is, a, who doesn't want bulletproof doors in their car? I mean, seriously, that is so cool. Those are gonna be finding their way onto the Crown Vic probably before this weekend because we are obviously going up to the NEC in the Crown Vic in a couple of days time so I'll make sure those wind up on the car before then. Next up, I should, I should oil that creek but it adds character to this feature. Right this one, whoa, okay, is heavy and a lot of packaging stamps on there. Big old envelope. Oh, I need to be on, uh, on commission for these. Spyderco bug, these things are so cool not slice into the package, slice down the sellotape. Ooh, magazines. Ooh, ooh, okay. 
Ah, Top Gear from, wow, 2005, auto car from 2008, and one more, stuck to the back of it. Wait, must have got damp along the way or something. Oh no, I can't see what that one is. Auto Star Cars 1989. So what's, in, what's featuring in Top Gear 2000, Star Cars of 2004? This is the kind of thing it's always good to have in the back of a car if you're going to a show and you get a bit of downtime. You can go and reminisce about some time. Oh, clown shoe, as everyone calls it these days. Oh, I've got good reading in these. Oh, this is interesting. BMW's wild new look. Now BMW's new look is frankly gopping. This is BMW's new look from 2008 when it was actually looking quite stylish and quite interesting and sharp. So. They've made a wrong turn there. Oh, is there a name on this? No, there is no, there's not a name on this to say thank you to. So thank you, whoever you are. Okay, next up. Rick. We have got, also from within the UK, a small box of some kind. More packaging. Oh, okay. Fog lights, what are these for? I see fog lights. I think that these are, I say, yeah, made in Belgium. Oh, it says Rover on it. I was gonna say, I think these are for the 200 VI or for any R3 bubble shaped Rover. So oh, thank you, whoever sent those over. I will have to compare which has got the better set in it, the car or these ones. Very handy indeed. If I have any stone chip accidents, that'd be perfect to have on the shelf just in case. So thank you for a note. No. Do please, if you send stuff into this segment, do please include a note and a name so I know who to say thank you to. But yeah, that is really, really cool. Well, that was a, this one, the slightly older looking one, is actually genuine Rover. You can see the name on there still. Is this one genuine? Yeah, this is both, they're both genuine Rover. Both got the Rover stampings on the top. Valeo Rover. There's probably a build thing on there as well. 30302, so either March 2002 or February 2003. So not far off the age of the car, really. That is really cool. Thank you, whoever sent that in. Very much appreciated. I'll keep them safe in there. I'm going to start getting some racking over at the barn so that I can sort of stack and organise spare parts that I've got in stock. That is so, so cool. Thank you, whoever that was. Brilliant items. I'll put them on the floor so I don't fall off and break. That would be a bad thing. Again, thank you. Thank you, whichever person sent those in. More junk, more trunk. Small parcel. I love the uh, reuse of Amazon packaging, which uh, is becoming a popular thing these days. Now this one, is there a note in here? Yes, there is a note. Well, first of all, oh, hang on. It is, oh, Alfa Romeo sign. Oh, that's cool. I'll have, we'll put that up in the barn. We need some decoration in the barn. Matches the alpha sign behind my back. I didn't know that was coming, actually. This is from David Mill. Hi, Matt. Sending a junk in the trunk item. Uh, just a little something alpha for your new Matt Cave, which is a very good name for it. Keep up the good work. Loving the fleet and the way the fleet is evolving. The Freelander and Crown Vic are excellent additions. The old stager, Volvo, and of course, the most excellent Alpha 145 are my favourites. A lot of people love those two cars. Hoping to get more in-person meets this year and that you can progress with the V8 during 2022. Well, I'm hoping to get some more meets as well. I've been looking at what shows are coming up over the year and when perhaps I can try and get a few more. Um, so yeah, stands, take a car along to a car show and, and join in. And uh, well, so obviously we've got the motorist coming up after the NEC. Motorist is in May, I'm gonna say May, probably. And the NEC is on Thursday, Friday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, get that right. Um, as for the, 2000, um, the V8, I have realized why it wasn't starting. I will be bringing out a video maybe next week, hopefully I can get things filmed. I know exactly why it wasn't starting. And then I couldn't go any further with that because I lost the thing that would make it start. I've now found those things that would make it start and now I can make them be part of the engine and hopefully we can have a working V8 very soon. Anyway, thank you, David. This I'll take over. I've got a bag of things I need to take over to the um, barn next time I go over there. That will be in it. I'll hang it up somewhere in the wall. Next item. Go for another box. Oh, gaffer tape. I love the use of gaffer tape in packaging. I'm, I'm guilty of doing this myself quite a lot as well, I have to be honest. Don't trust 
when you don't trust um, parcel tape, gaffer tape is the only thing that will do. Oh. Oh, here we go. Dear Matt, I saw, oh, where's this from? This is from, blah, blah, blah. got a name on the bottom. Uh, Jonathan, whoops, some loudspeakers here, wow. Pioneer TSG 1045s. Nice speakers, actually, two ways. What size is that? 10 centimeter. Oops. I saw in your last junk in the trunk, you had been given a car radio which you plan to use in the barn. This reminded me, I have a pair of Pioneer speakers that I took out of a car some years ago and have no use for. I thought that, um, Assuming they still work, <laughs> you can link up to the radio. Good plan, I like that. Um, I hope you can make use of them, enjoy the channel, and look forward to the new developments. Uh, all the best, Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan, that is fantastic. Um, let's have a look at these things, because these are lovely speakers. I used to have Pioneer pods in the back of the Rover 2000. Are they still in there? They might still be in there. No, they're not. I wonder where they are. Oh, lovely, these look quite nice, actually. 80 watt, 10 centimeter coax two ways. That's a good size actually. Do you know what? That might actually work in the, in the V8 Rover. I'm thinking out loud. I might misappropriate them for use in the car rather than the barn. We shall see. Hmm. We shall see. Thank you, thank you very much indeed, Jonathan. That is fantastic. Bit of vintage car audio. I'm, I'm guessing these are about twin early noughties, I'm guessing is very cool stuff. Let's put it back in the box so I don't lose it and break it. Yeah, I love a bit of car audio. That is fantastic, thank you. So yeah, we need to get some audio because currently over there I'm using a 1980s Grundig radio cassette which is great for four minutes and then the tuning just kind of drifts off. So yeah, I do need to get a 12 volt inverter to power a car radio and then I can uh, some decent car audio. Right, next one, this one says fragile on it, so I'm hoping the postman was kind. Okay, let's see what we have in here. Oops. If there's a note, it's inside the plastic bag. Ooh, brochures. Brochures are always good. Okay, cars, March, April, oh, Ford cars, 1988. Oh man, the full range Fiesta, oh, check this out. So I've got two things here. We've got the new Focus 1999 brochure. That is exciting, we'll come back to that in a moment. And then we've got the Cars range brochure from 1988, March, April. The Fiesta Popular. Oh, this would be really handy, um, useful information when I do some Ford reviews in the future. Folding rear um, seat back and removable carpet. Covered rear parcel tray. That is exciting times. Fiesta L, body colored steel bumpers with gray protection moldings. Wow, wowee. That's not body color, that's black. What are you talking about? The Festival 2. Got so many special editions. They really have trimmed down model ranges these days. Oh, Escorts. Oh, I had a few of these Escorts. Escort gear. Wow, gotta remember that well. I sort of like an Escort just to reminisce, but then I'm reminded I didn't like it that much. I always like the Orion more than the Escort. Oh, Granada, proper car. Oops. Oh, here we go, now we're talking Sierra XR4. Potent but practical, the sensational Sierra XR4x4 is a supercar whose advanced technology provides many important benefits. Ford's acclaimed rear-wheel drive transmission, uh, sorry, four-wheel drive transmission, gives its fast hatchback astonishing stability and traction, particularly in adverse conditions. Oh, that's a car I'd love to add to the barn. Oops, oh dear. Let's have a quick look at the Focus one as well, because the Focus one looks really exciting, because the Focus was such a departure for Ford. Shouldn't you expect more from life? That's interesting, this is 10 years on and the difference in the, the, the way the it's laid out, the fonts they've used, everything, the photography, it's all so, so different. And that's the same photo but colorized for different colors. Versatile, bold human, that doesn't make any sense. Rewarding, purposeful, confident, 
Ah, oh, we were getting into the era of management speak, weren't we, in this, this time? Flexible, flexible individual functional. Oh man. Yeah, Mark 1 Focus is definitely a car to collect at the moment. They're rock bottom prices, but guaranteed they're going to go up. Oh, that's so cool. So much information about that. Fantastic. Oh, thank you. I did not see a note in. Again, I didn't see a note in. Please do put notes in so I know who to say thank you to because that is, well, they're both really, really cool. Lots of really great information. I've got bits of brochure and my coffee now. Right. Let's see what else we have hiding in here. One says, do not bend. Same writing as the previous envelopes. I'm su suspecting it's the same sender. Incidentally, if you're wondering what this is, I realized I had multiple, multiple versions of the same small socket. So I got a bit of wood and some nails and hammered in so I got the leftover multiples. I made a nice set of all the, the different three sizes of socket on the board and then the leftovers, the overs. So I've got four, I think these are six millimeter, seven millimeter, four, seven millimeters for some reason. So I can just keep them all together, not being confusing mess everywhere. It was boring, but it made the place a lot tidier. Ah, someone was collecting brochures in the 80s. This one's a little bit damp, I guess. This is the 5 Series, uh, which E Series is E28. Uh, oh, it's a bit damp, actually, unfortunately. E28 brochure. E30, oh, E30 is great. It's had a little bit of water damage in there in the storage over the years. But it looks like the number plate has been I'm going to say Photoshop is the wrong word because this is pre-Photoshop artworked on there in some way because it's just a little bit crisper than the rest of the photo. <laughs> and it's got a microchip in it, so they're making a big deal of the fact they've got a microchip in the car. Features that clearly show the superiority, superiority of a six-cylinder in the two-litre class. Our E30 is a fantastic car. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, this is good. The Datsun Patrol, not Nissan Patrol, Datsun Patrol, you see that? Whoop. Wow, I've never seen a brochure for a, for a patrol. I'm having some fun with that one. Datsun Patrol Estate, which is the, the four door plus tailgate. Oh, the old OK Nissan sticker. The Datsun Patrol benefits from the design and production resources of the world's third largest vehicle manufacturer. It's built in one of the most advanced car factories in Japan. It goes on. Are there some stats and figures in here? Yes, there are. Petrol and diesel engines. Power output is, oh, hang on. 120 horsepower from the petrol, 95 horsepower from the diesel. Well, that is great background information. Can definitely use that kind of info when researching videos. So thank you, whoever sent this. And this one is, oh, Citroen brochure. Um, when is this from? Is there a date on it? 1982, wow. Amazing. The Visa Super E, Visa Super X. Again, so many variants, so many models back at this time. Special editions every other week just to get a car flogged. Oh, check out that centerfold, that's cool. These days you have three models and four colors and that's your lot. Back in the 80s, you had so much choice. GSA Special Estate. Oh, see, oh man, look at the seats in the CX Prestige. That is, that is business class there. Fantastic. Again, no name with this, so thank you whoever sent this over. I'm sorry it's a bit damp. Um, I'm hoping that was not since I've had it. I don't think it will be because it's been here in the garage, which is generally quite dry. Wow, beautiful. Thank you whoever that sent that in. That is absolutely fantastic information. I'm gonna be moving all my brochures from the loft here at the house to the barn where I can actually access them a bit more easily. 
and this is the penultimate package now. Open with care, no sharps, so oh, I'll have to be a bit careful here. Oh, this is very definitely a past the parcel moment. I think we're nearly there, okay. Aha, now I've got this all apart, I can kind of see roughly what this is. Now there's a note which says, here is a contribution to your Freelander project, some sump and IRD drain fill washers, which I guess will be in here. I won't open that right now because they will fall on the floor and I will lose them, so I'll leave that in there for a second. Um, a genuine Land Rover leather armrest. Remove rubber one from, and drill four holes and screw armrest in place. Wow. That is really cool. Yeah, because I've got the rubber one with a little um, pocket in it at the moment. Oh, that's, that's nice, is that? This is from Mick. So thank you, Mick. That's brilliant stuff, because the Land Rover Freelander is becoming a firm family favorite. It's over in the barn at the moment, because I had to move um, the car over here and then come back in something else. But yeah, that is always nice. You can smell the leather cleaner on it over the years. Delicious, and I think these are the bolts that screw it in. He did put some instructions on there. Thank you, Mick, that is brilliant. So yeah, the Freelander's turning into quite a nice car with bits like that. Okay, there's just one more thing, and this is the special one which I knew was coming. If you are a fan of the Crown Victoria, you are gonna love this. So, over in Ohio lives Darren, who is Free Pie and Chips Garage on YouTube. He's got an amazing collection of cars over in Ohio, uh, which is where my crown of it came from. He lives not too far of a drive away from Beechwood where this car was originally based. And he's been over to the police station and you might have seen this in a previous video when he actually took some footage of the police station itself. He went into the police station, he met the guy who drove the car. He has now sent me over his actual business card. The, the sergeant who drove my car, I've got his business card here. His, his office phone number, his email address, that is just absolutely astonishing that needs to stay with the car because that is a piece of its history, it really is. I mean, if you like old cars and you love the history that goes with them, it's the stories that make them special and that kind of thing is irreplaceable, that is fantastic. And then he went one better. He really surprised me with this. I'm not quite sure where exactly he found this, but this is an honest to goodness, genuine article Beechwood Police shoulder patch. Yeah, it sits up here on your, on your shoulder from the uniform. I don't think this has ever been used. It doesn't look, appear to have any, any stitching marks. Um, so that is absolutely fantastic. Again, this is something that will stay with the car. Um, keep it in there in the glove box or on the dashboard when I'm at shows and things, because that is amazing. What an amazing connection to the car's history to have not only oops, the business card of the guy who drove the car, but a part of the uniform of the guys who are driving from that same department. So thank you, Darren, that is absolutely astonishing. So I'm blown away with this particular thing. In fact, I'm blown away with everything. It's been a really good week for a month for Junk in the Trunk. So thank you everybody who has been part of this and sent some interesting stuff in. It's been, been brilliant. As always, if you do have more to send over to us, then please do bung it into the PO box address. And we're always looking forward to the next month's edition. I know there's a couple of interesting things hoofing their way across the Atlantic from other places, um, which I was hoping would arrive in time, but didn't this time. I'm also still looking for the complete set of number plates from around the world, a global planetary selection of license plates to stick on the barn wall. I've started collecting them over here, and now I've started moving that collection over to the barn. I thought I hadn't mounted yet now there, so I'm split between two places really. Got some really cool vintage American ones over here. We've got a lot of interesting Australian ones over in the barn now. Um, so yeah, and if you happen to have, and you don't mind passing with any global number plates that we haven't got already, or even ones we have as well, um, then please do bung them over, because it'd be fantastic to get them up there. Anything else interesting, old brochures, old magazines, old bits of paraphernalia, you name it, bung it in, share with the class, we'll all enjoy it together. So thank you for being a part of this and thank you everyone for watching and for members and Patreons of the Main Furious Driving channel for helping this all keep on going every month. I do appreciate your time for watching and your generosity with these things. Oh, by the way, if you haven't already subscribed to this Tea Break channel, then please do hit the subscribe button down below. It makes a massive difference to the ongoing uh, performance figures as far as YouTube is concerned and rates us higher so it gets shown to more people. Thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you again next time.